Let's turn to the book of Habakkuk. It's a small book. Three chapters, just three chapters. But it is a wonderful book. Habakkuk means embrace. He had the experience of embracing the Lord Jesus Christ. So he had a wonderful experience of just embracing the Lord Jesus Christ and feeling the complete security in his life. When we try to understand the Habakkuk, the prophet Habakkuk, who lived yeah, around 605 BC, the prophet Habakkuk is rather an obscure figure. But his book is one of the gems of the Old Testament. It is one of the gems of the Old Testament, Habakkuk. It seems to have been written shortly before the Battle of Kerkemish in 605 BC, when the Babylonians became the undisputed power of that in that area. Habakkuk's problem was theodicing or divine justice. He could not understand the divine justice as he saw the things happening. Internally, he saw violence, law breaking and, and injustice go unpunished. So he questioned God about it. Why God is allowing the injustice to go on? Why God is not punishing the injustice? He could not uh, find the answer. God's answer was only troubled him more. What did God say? So he raised the question of God's justice again. God reassured Habakkuk by telling him that if he could only wait, it would all be clear to him. Because God does everything in his own time. It's not according to the human knowledge, but according to the God's, God's wisdom, eternal wisdom. He does everything in his own time. For everything he has time. And he does everything in his own time. That's what we should uh, clearly hold on to this thing. Lord, why are you not answering? God showed it very clearly that when Jesus was on the cross of Calvary, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Jesus asked the question. But there was no God's answer. Just silence. Look at that. This is so wonderful. And for Habakkuk, uh, when there was no answer from God for the problems he was facing in those days, it confused him. It, it, uh, it, uh, it, it surprised him. Why God is not answering? Lord, I am asking. I am praying and praying. You are not answering. Hmm? God reassured Habakkuk by telling him that if he could only wait, it would all be clear to him because God acts in his own time. God has time for everything. He will not act without his time is fulfilled. We read that in the Bible. In the fulfillment of time, God acts. So we need to patient, uh, we need to be patiently waiting for the answer. There may be problem, yes. Difficulties, yes. And troubles, yes. 
But God has his own answer, own time. One thing you be reassured that the Lord Jesus Christ will never ever leave his children washed by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. That is absolutely sure. But about the timing, he doesn't act according to our timing. God acts in his own time according to his timing. That's what, eh? That's what we read in the Bible. In the fullness of time, God sent his only begotten son. See? Look at that. This is absolutely, absolutely true. We should, we should wait for the timing of the Lord. God has his own time to deal with certain things. He, he will not act out of the time. He will act when the time is fulfilled. What a wonderful thing it is. That's our God. Yes, we have been praying, Lord, relieve us, deliver us. Lord, this is the problem, that is the problem. Yes, we, we can tell anything to him, my dear friends. That, that liberty God has given to his children. He understands very well the human problem. Our problem, our mind is eh, asking questions and questions and questions. Lord, when, when, when? But God will act when the time has fully come. And that will bring justice. And that will bring wonderful comfort. So, we have to wait for the time of God. What a wonderful thing. We know the story of men and women of God in the Bible, especially we, as we think about Job. He was a rich man. He was a godly man. He respected God like anything. And you know the story, he was, huh? he was devastated because God gave the devil the permission. Devil went, Satan went to the presence of God and, and made a complaint. Mm -hmm. The Lord asked the first question because God knows what was there in the mind of the devil? Have you considered my son, my servant Job? Oh, he is faithful in all my ways. And then he says, Lord, you have given him everything. Nothing is lacking to him. Hmm? Take away everything. Then he will curse you on your face, he said. Hmm. Because devil, see look at that, the intention when we talk, uh, when the devil talked, the intention was very, made it very clear that he is the destroyer. He wants to destroy the lives of the people of God. He is the destroyer. But the Lord Jesus is not the destroyer. He is the giver. Huh? We see that on the cross of Calvary. Jesus bore our penalty on himself. He took our burden of sin on himself. And he went through the tragedy of his soul. The agony of his soul. For you and for me. Because he wants to give a joy of salvation to you. There is only one way the sin should be dealt with 
unless the sin is dealt with, salvation cannot be given. So the Lord Jesus took all our, uh, all our uh, penalty on himself. He took the sin of the whole world on himself. And the Holy God, the loving Father, he offered his own son on the cross of Calvary. See, we see the picture of uh, uh, that in the life of Abraham. His son Isaac was 15 years old. We read that in Genesis. And God called him one, one day, Abraham, Abraham. And immediately responded, here I am. See, look at that. And God said, take your son, your only son, Isaac, and to a place where I show you. So that was the three days journey. Hmm? To a place where I will show you. And build an altar. And offer your son on the altar as a living sacrifice. So Isaac was born in the old age of Abraham. You know the story very well. How would, have, uh, how would he would have he felt that time? But he never questioned God. As God said, he prepared everything for the sacrifice. He prepared his son Isaac and he put a, a, a wood on his shoulder and he, he traveled to the place. It was three days journey. After three days journey, God saw Abraham came to the appointed place and he built an altar. Hmm? He built an altar. He prepared everything and he took his son and tied him and laid him on the altar. There was silence. No answer was coming. When he, when he lift his sword and about to kill his own son Isaac, God stopped him. God stopped him. My dear friends, one thing, you know, God wants to see your commitment to him sometimes. Whether your commitment Is to you a God or something else? Abraham's commitment was to God. He was willing to offer his own son because God said to do so. My dear friends, the question is very simple. Why Abraham obeyed God? He had no other son. He was a young son, just 15 years old. He was born in his old age, Abraham's old age. Hmm. But yet, he was giving first preference to God, his creator. First preference to God. I have to, God told me and I have to obey him under any circumstances. That's why he did not tell his wife also. You will go and worship God and come back, he said. What a wonderful faith. Abraham knew that my God is all in all. Even if I kill my son, offer my son, 
God is able to raise him up. See, that was the trust. That was the faith of Abraham. See, my dear friends, one thing, you know. God will never ask you anything that comes in your way. That comes. That hurts you like anything. No. He will not do that. That's why eh, he did not allow Abraham to slay his son on the altar. And he provided a, a substitute, a sheep, in place of Isaac. And he offered the sacrifice there. And that's why God blessed that family abundantly. My dear friends, our, our, what is our commitment to the Lord? Am I willing to do as the Lord say? It may be difficult. It may be painful. It may be devastating. But when you obey, obedience is better than sacrifice. What a wonderful thing it is. God loves his obedient children. How do we obey? I'll tell you, my dear friends. You want to go exactly according to what God says. This is, this is the only way. Even in our worship, we should be, we should be worship the Lord according to the New Testament pattern that is given in the Bible. No other pattern. God wants, God is a monarch. God wants that we should go in his way, which he proclaimed. Acts chapter 2 verse 42. I have been telling this repeatedly. That is the New Testament pattern. Uh, New Testament pattern of biblical worship. Look at that. That is the deep pattern. No other pattern. See, one thing we should understand. We should see for a church which is closest to the word of God. Near there may be. But it is not the question of distance. It is the question of our allegiance to our holy God. Because God has given us everything. So we should walk according to his word. That is important. God desired it. God wants right from the beginning. That people, man should walk according to his word. When God created Adam and Eve and put him in a beautiful garden in Eden, God said, you can eat the fruit of all these trees. But you should not eat the fruit of the tree in the middle of the garden. If you eat, you will die. See, God provided everything in the Garden of Eden. Such a beautiful garden. Everything was available. Nothing was lacking in that garden for man. But the man's thought devil came there in the form of a serpent. A tempted man, you know the story. And 
man listen to the voice of the devil instead of being steadfast to the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because he did that, he was thrown out of the garden. Because he did that, that punishment came. He had to be wandering. He became a wanderer. Man became a wanderer. And everywhere he went, he could not lay, stay there more than uh, more than some time, some years. Look at that. He had to undergo the punishment of his disobedience. He had to earn his livelihood by his sweat. And the man became a wanderer. And we see, even today, hey, the people are wandering. But God had a great plan which he proclaimed to Abraham. What a great plan it is. God sent his only begotten son, the Lord Jesus Christ, as a great sacrifice. And he offered him on the cross of Calvary. It is the eternal sacrifice for eternity to eternity. It cannot be raised at all. It is a living sacrifice, perfect sacrifice, holy sacrifice, redemptive sacrifice, whereby you and me are saved by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. What a wonderful thing it is. What a wonderful thing it is. How much we should love him. How much we should worship Him. How much we should adore Him. Eternity is not sufficient. I usually say this. Eternity is not sufficient to pay back what God has done to us. We should be ever grateful for our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who took, took upon my sins and your sins on himself and delivered me and you from the consequence of the sins. Rather, he delivered us from the hell fire. What a wonderful God we have. See, here, in the book of Habakkuk, only three chapters, mm. only three chapters, mm. And God, to, God talked to, God answered Habakkuk's problems, troubles and difficulties. And he made it very clear in his time he will make everything beautiful. This satisfied Habakkuk. And with renewed faith he seemed to conclude that given God's holiness, his own questions, strong statement of faith. His own questions were unjustified. What questions he had Habakkuk? His own questions were unjustified. He found it out. That we read in uh, chapter 2 verse 20. See, Habakkuk says here, But the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Look at that. That was the conclusion. That was the wonderful revelation of God to Habakkuk. Hmm? So, I told you the meaning of Habakkuk is embrace. And Habakkuk embraced God like anything. Mm. What a wonderful thing it is. Mm. What a wonderful thing it is. Mm. 
chapter 3 is a prayer psalm which ends with another another strong statement of faith. See Habakkuk, now he became stronger in his faith in God. For a book of such small size, Habakkuk has wielded remarkable influence. The Habakkuk commentary is the most well-preserved Old Testament commentary of those found among the Dead Sea Scrolls and reflects a type of Old Testament exegesis which helps us to understand better much of the New Testament use of Old Testament. Look at that. More significantly, Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4 was used by Paul in Romans chapter verse 117. What is the verse says Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4? Behold his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him but the just shall live by faith. How man will live? The just shall live by faith. That's what Habakkuk said in chapter 2 verse 4. Look at that. That was repeated by Paul in the book of Romans. What a wonderful thing it is. So, this is so wonderful. In chapter 1 Habakkuk complains about injustice. You can read that. And chapter 2 hmm, what all Habakkuk complained hmm, because of the circumstances, because he was seeing what was happening. Hmm, all the, uh, all the uh, questions of Habakkuk, God answers in chapter 2. See, now, let me read a few verses. In chapter 2, verse 1, we read it like this. Habakkuk says, I will stand upon my watch. Hmm. That is the beauty of Habakkuk. Though he was confused, but he was willing to wait. I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will, what God will say unto me. And what I shall answer when I am reproved. What God will say unto me, I will watch, he says. And I will wait. And I will see what to answer when I am reproved. And he says, and the Lord answered me and said, Write this vision and make it plain upon tables, that he may run that readeth thee. Look at that. Write this and keep it. Make it plain upon tables hmm? that he may, that one who wants to know, he may run that readeth thee. Look at that. When anyone reads this, he will run back, run out with joy. Because God will answer all your questions. Behold his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him. Man should not eh, lift up his heart and he should not boast. I am so and so, I am so and so. No. That is very very important. But the just shall live by faith just. Totally committed to the Lord Jesus Christ. We should be totally committed to the Lord Jesus Christ. We should trust him in, uh, in all circumstances. See, for example, the Lord said, Lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the seas. Hmm? Nothing shall separate you from the love of Christ. That's what God says. No pestilence shall come near you. 
Look at that. Psalm 91. There are so many things the devil uses to attack his children. But God's protection is so wonderful that all that arrows come from the devil will be will be burnt. Will be attacked and destroyed. What a wonderful thing it is. What a wonderful thing. See, he says in verse 5, A, also because he transgresseth by wine, he is a proud man, neither keepeth at home, who enlargeth his desire as hell, and he is as death, and cannot be satisfied, but gathereth unto him all nations, and heapeth unto him all people. That is the work of the devil. Shall not all these take up a parable against him, and a taunting proverb against him, and say, Woe to him that increaseth that which is not his. How long? And to him that ladeth himself with thick clay. Look at that. Shall they not rise up suddenly that shall bite thee? And awake that shall vex thee? And thou shalt be for booties unto them. Because thou hast spoiled many nations. All the remnant of the people shall spoil thee. Because of man's blood. And for the violence of the land, of the city. And of all that dwell therein. Woe to him that covereth an evil covetousness in his, to, to his house. That he may set his nest on high, that he may be delivered from the power of evil. Thou hast consulted shame to thy house by cutting off many people and hast sinned against thy soul. What will happen? For the stone shall cry out of the wall, and the beam out of the timber shall answer it. O to him that buildeth a town with blood and establisheth the city by iniquity. Behold, is it not of the Lord of hosts that the people shall labor in, in the very fire and the people shall weary themselves for very vanity. Whatever terrible thing it is. This is what Habakkuk says. Yes, we have tribulation in this world. Because Jesus said, in this world you have tribulation. But be of good courage. I have overcome the world. Many, many things come against God's people. In my own experience, the uh, devil tried to uh, disturb me and destroy me with many, many problems, many, many enemies but the Lord kept me safe even today see our the answer is whatever that come the answer is thank you Lord because one thing I know that all things come to, comes to us come to us it come to us with a purpose with a purpose. God allows certain things with a purpose. God allowed that huh, and, uh, uh, tragedy in the life of Job with a purpose. What was the purpose? He was refined. His faith was refined like anything. He became stronger and stronger. Even though his wife came and said, hey, curse God and died. He rebuked his own wife. Wife. What was the purpose? The purpose was he was proved to be a genuine servant of God. There are because there are many duplicate servants, duplicate believers. <laughs> Who will not say that? Uh, 
I will I have believed everybody will say but the life is bogus many of the life so called pastors i know oh they will make a a, a solemn sound in like that you know to glorify them all with the, like you know oh holy pan this pan you know like they act but the life shows just the opposite that's the tragedy see what has become mainly is christian has become a religion that is the problem christian is not a religion c h r i s t christ and then i a n i am nothing galatians chapter 2 verse 20 it's not i paul said but christ lives in me that is a relationship christian is not a religion christianity is not a religion those who make it who had made that made it as a religion heathens they made it as a religion who whoever says i am belonging to christian religion no he is a heathen there is no religion in the sight of god all religions are made by man that is a story in the bible it is a relationship wonderful relationship it is a relationship between his heart and my heart this is the, this is so wonderful so uh, we should love the lord with all our heart the lord is the only one who is real he delivers us from damnation he he uh, cleanses us from our sins by his precious blood and he receives us to himself what a wonderful thing it is see everything the lord jesus christ lord jesus christ has cancelled cancel the document saying that you are hell bound he cancelled that documents on the cross of calvary he nailed it to the cross he gave forgiveness he gave cleanse cleansing by his precious blood and look at on the cross of calvary i have been telling this you know there were two thieves one at the left and one at the right and one thief said to the lord jesus lord if you are a son of god save yourselves and save uh, our souls save us also then the other thief he rebuked that thief see we are worthy to receive all this punishment but this man the lord jesus christ has done nothing see that the revelation is, was given to the uh, thief who was dying with the lord jesus christ on the cross of calvary wonderful revelation came to him look at that he understood who jesus was and he turned to the lord jesus christ and said lord jesus remember me when you come as in your kingdom what was the answer from the dying savior on the cross of calvary in that agony he answered that request he said this very hour you will be with me in paradise not after some time this very hour you will be with me in paradise look at that who is jesus the lord of glory the god himself 
eternal father. Who is the thief? A murderer. Hmm? Did everything wrong in his life. And he was worthy to be hanged. As he was hanging on the cross of Calvary, he looked at the face of the Lord Jesus Christ. Though he was bleeding from top to bottom, his face was filled with glory and compassion. So the wonderful, wonderful answer that thief got it. This very hour, not when I come come in my kingdom. This very hour, you will be with me in paradise. What a wonderful thing it is. How much we should love the Lord. Hmm? Our Lord is a loving God. And a very, very loving God. Good God. He will not condemn any, anybody. He will forgive each and every person who comes to his presence and say, Lord, have mercy upon me. He will never ask, why, why did you do that? He never asked that thief, why did you uh, do all these uh, this criminal things? No, he never asked. See the beauty of the words of the Lord Jesus Christ? So, our Lord God, Lord Jesus Christ, is a great, big, wonderful God. Great, big, wonderful God. And a loving God. A compassionate God. And He has, a, He is desirous, He is desirous to save you from the clutches of the devil. If you come to the presence of God and say, Lord Jesus, have mercy upon me. Don't think that you are belonging to this church, that church. You are okay. I am very religious. I am going to the church. I am doing this. I am doing that. Don't depend upon what you do. Don't depend upon the offering you uh, give, it to, uh, give to God. That will not save you. But accept that you are a sinner. And you need salvation, you need deliverance. Come to the cross of Christ and say, Lord Jesus, have mercy upon me, a sinner. And you will experience the great deliverance in your life. And there, then you will experience the embrace of the Heavenly Father. Habakkuk means I told you embrace. Habakkuk had so many questions, so many problems. But God spoke to Habakkuk and he understood. And though there was problems in his life, the period was not good. That period, 605 BC. That was not good. There was trouble for God's people. But he understood, Habakkuk understood one thing. That uh, whatever the circumstances may be, I will embrace my Savior always. That was the that was a wonderful change in the life of Habakkuk. And he became a great man. Only three chapters. It is this is the wonderful book. The Lord will embrace you. You will experience the embrace of the loving arms of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that will only comfort you like anything. That will only, eh, only deliver you from all the problems, whatever the problem may be. 
That's why Jesus said, in this world you have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. When the Lord Jesus Christ is with you, you know, you are the victor in all circumstances. So all problems, whatever the problem may be, the Lord is with you. Lord is with you. He will take care of the problems for you. I have experienced this. And you must have also experienced this. Because the hand of the Lord Jesus Christ wants to embrace you all the time and comfort you and wipe away your tears. That's what he has promised in his holy word. See this wonderful word, wonderful word will help you, comfort you, encourage you because this is the word of life and gives you abundant life. Because Jesus said, I have come to give you life and life abundantly. Look at that. Chapter 3 is the prayer of Habakkuk. Having been, having been embraced, experienced the embrace of the Lord Jesus, he starts his prayer. He had so many questions. But all questions were cleared by God. And he says, O Lord, I have heard thy speech. Look at that. And was afraid. O Lord, revive thy work in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years make known in wrath. Remember mercy. Yes, he understood God was wrathful. But in wrath, Lord, remember mercy. What you have shown mercy to the people. We are, we are alive only because of your mercy. And he says, God came from Teman. And the Holy One from Mount Paran, Selah. His glory covered the heavens and the earth was full of his praise. Look at that. The Habakkuk had questions. But... When he came into contact with God, he understood the glory of God and the greatness of God and the wonderful, wonderful presence of God. And he says, and his brightness was as the light. Whose brightness? God's brightness. Was as the light. He had horns coming out of his hand and there was the there was, the hiding, there was the hiding of his power. He is a powerful God. Nothing is impossible to him. He is the mighty God. Nobody can conf confront him. He is the loving God. Those who come to him will experience the wonderful love he has for you. Nobody can love you like that. Only the Lord Jesus Christ. Because he shed his precious blood. He showed his love on the cruel cross. The agony of his soul was for you and me. So that we may we may be joyful. Paul says in Philippians, rejoice always. Again I say re rejoice. What we, what we have to rejoice? The great salvation of God. The great deliverance. When the pe people of Israel was delivered from, the, from Egypt, they rejoiced together. They danced and they sang praises to the Lord. That kind of joy. What a wonderful thing it is. How does the joy come? The word joy, three letter word. J stands for Jesus. O stands for others. Jesus said love your neighbors as the, yourself. And Y stands for 
last years. If we make uh, ourselves fast, why OJ? There is no English word in that. Jesus should be first. Others should be next and yourselves should be last. That will bring great joy in your life. See, Habakkuk was filled with great joy. And you read this, chapter 3, Habakkuk's long prayer. He says, He stood and measured the earth he beheld, and drove asunder the nations, and everlasting mountains were scattered, and the perpetual hills did bow. His ways are everlasting. What a wonderful statement. Habakkuk started praising God. Hmm? Because he understood who is my God. Who is my God? My God is an almighty God. A great big wonderful God. He is the creator God. He gives me joy. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Look at that. He is concerned about the minute details of my life. My dear friends, I will tell you again and again. He, the Lord Jesus Christ is concerned about the minute details of your life. Minute details. That's our Lord Jesus. Hmm? That means he is totally, totally concerned about you because his blood has cleansed you completely. How much we should worship God? As we read that, eh? See what is the determination of Habakkuk after having the vision of the living God. I will read verse 17 onwards. Just listen to me and try to read it again and again. This is beautiful words, 17 to 19. Although, listen to me very carefully, Habakkuk says, Although the fig tree shall not blossom, Neither shall fruit be in the vines. The labor of the olive shall fail, and the field shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stalls. Look at that total emptiness. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Look at that. That's my meat. That's my, eh? That's my uh, uh, strength. Everything is empty. Yet, I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. What a wonderful thing it is. Hmm? The hymn writer says, joy of the Lord is my strength. Look at that. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Yeah. Habakkuk says. And then verse 19. The Lord God is, who is he? The number one, the Lord God is my strength. He is my mighty strength. Even though I do not have proper food, I will be stronger. That is the meaning of it. Because the Lord God is my strength. And listen to me. And he who God will make my feet like hinds. <laughs> hinds run fast. Look at that. See the Lord God gives me energy. Even though you are an old man, God says to me, hey, I, will, I will make your feet like hinds feet. And listen to me. Number three. And he will, that God will, make me to walk upon mine high places. He will make me to walk on the high places in the mountain I climb. Because of my Lord. What a wonderful thing it is. What a wonderful thing it is. My dear friends, the question is very simple. 
and God is so much concerned about you and me. And God is so much concerned about you and me. And he is totally committed to his children washed by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. How much more we should love him? That is a simple question. Lord, what can I give it back? Even if I offer my whole body to be burned, I cannot pay back what you have, you have done for me. What shall I do? Throughout the days of my life, I will hold on to one name, which is the eternal name, the Lord Jesus Christ and walk in his path as it is written in his word. I will walk according to his word, verbatim as it is. That is the commitment I have to make. I am making that commitment. Lord, what shall I render for all the benefits that you have given? I shall lift up the name of the Lord and call on Him. What a wonderful thing it is. What a wonderful thing. How much we should be grateful to, to the Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, the Lord Jesus will never ever leave you. There are many, many promises. Many, many. Can a mother can a mother forget her suck, sucking child? She may, the Bible says, but I will never, ever for, forget you. That means your name and my name. The people of the names of the people of God are written in the heart of God. Because that promise has come from the heart of God to unworthy people like us. What a wonderful Saviour. How much we should rejoice in the Saviour, Lord Jesus Christ. How much we should love Him. How much we should serve Him as long as we live. Our only one goal should please should be the thing that pleases the heart of God. And I should walk in His face as it is written in the Word. I should work for Him. We have plenty of opportunity to tell one simple sentence. Lord Jesus is the living God. Just, you can say that. You can say that. Lord Jesus loves you. That will work. Where you say, where you work, you know, you can utter this name because this name is above all names and this name is the eternal name. And this name is a wonder-working name. And this name is the uh, name of healing. This name is the name of perfection. This name is the name that comforts people like anything. May this name be highly, highly lifted up and glorified. And the name of the Lord may may be spread abroad in many places, many lives and many people may come to the saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus. God bless you.